Hi everybody, Deborah Stewart here. And today I'm going to um, suggest to you that you think about a repetitive pattern. And this is another abstract composition that you will see um, many times, even with some realistic works, but with some abstract works. So I'm just gonna show you mine. I'm gonna do some sketching on newsprint, and then I will do one myself on acrylic on paper. So here are some that I did. I took a repetitive pattern that, I'll do a close-up of this too so you can see it, but it has some shapes in it that are like this. Basically just ovals, ovals. So I've repeated that throughout this painting. Some of them you can't see, they're in the background. Some of them are brighter and bolder as they are right here with the red. Some of them are broken up, some are stronger, but they're really repetitive patterns throughout the painting. Now, where might you see this? A couple of things come to mind of things I've seen that are realistic. When people are doing uh, paintings based on a lily pond and they have lily pads, that's a repetitive pattern that there's a lot of similar shapes. They may all be different, some larger, some smaller, uh, some more bold, some more subtle, but you've got a repetitive pattern. What about oyster shells? That is a painting I saw of someone on Patreon recently. And you could take oyster shells and also do repetitive patterns. I used to paint a lot of seashells, another really simple shape that you could do. So repetitive patterns. So there's my abstract. Here is another one that I've, I've got two of them here. I did two at the same time, and they, there are repetitive patterns. Oh, let me just show you this one. So I've got red because I was thinking, why should everything be black? Why don't I just have some red shapes? Well, a lot of these shapes are the same. Again, there are a lot of the shapes that I used in the abstract, but some of them have, there's some floral, um, shapes in there, but it's a repetitive pattern. Here's another one that goes with it. Again, this kind of an oval shape. So, you know, how did I decide on those? Well, sometimes when I'm doing abstracts, that is like a normal thing I make for some reason, that oval shape. So, let me just do some sketches here, and then I will do an acrylic on paper with some acrylic paints. So, a simple shape like the one I have here, just that I was doing in the examples that I showed you, you know, Those simple shapes. How about some even bolder? Might be like this. That same shape. Uh, something light that you can barely see. Um, how else could I vary that darker? Really bold. Um, how could I vary it as it's a composition on the paper? Let's say, just that simple shape. Let's say here's my painting. And I think about where am I going to put those simple shapes? And am I going to put most of them down here? Am I going to put them in the center? Am I going to put them off to the side, off to this side? Up at the top, where's the emphasis going to be? This, this, 
this or this, or right in the center. I usually don't go for right in the center. How about, let's go maybe down here at the bottom. Let's just kind of make some sketches here of these ovals, kind of overlapped. Maybe a large one. So just a repetitive shape. Think about that. I can put them other places, but maybe they'll be really subtle. And I won't have them everywhere. I'll have some open space. So maybe it'll be darker down here. And maybe some of these will be different colors. Maybe some will be black. Maybe some will be ochre. Maybe some will be the sienna color. This is create a color kind of chalks that I just bought. So a repetitive um, what other kind of a repetitive shape could I make? What about even something geometric? That's not my cup of tea, but, you know, uh, it might be someone's, a repetitive pattern. What else could be used for a repetitive pattern? Maybe it might be just a series of lines that you have made in an abstract that you can look around and you can find, uh, maybe it might be something like, I'm just gonna make this up. Maybe it might be something simple like that. Maybe it might, I repeat this. Maybe it's bigger. Something that gets repeated. What about, even these ideas are just coming to me here, what about a letter? What about, instead of a shape, we use a letter for a shape? Like, well that's almost like an A. This is very organic right here, that repetitive. What about, Right here, we'll just use a D. I'll use a D for my name. Maybe I can reverse it. You know, what can I do? How can I use that? How can I make that into some kind of a shape, a repetitive pattern? So there's some, some ideas where you take one shape and you repeat it in different ways, placing it different places on the painting or the pastel and um, leaving some open space, putting some emphasis. Where is the emphasis? Down here, over here, maybe down here at the bottom or up here at the top. How can you vary these things with color, with value, uh, different ways to make them, but they are repetitive shapes. I've seen people use these, uh, even in Patreon with some of the things I've critiqued and some of the things I've seen also in other workshops.
So that's my, that's uh, the theme for this video is how can you use a repetitive shape? And that's what I'm going to do in, in this next part of the I'm going to put down some paint gray acrylics. I'm just going to put down some, just a little bit of, oops, we're spilling it. Just a little bit of paint. And I think I'm going to do something different than the oval. So I don't know how this will turn out, but all right. Let's see now. I think I am going to go with something I see on one of my paintings that's in the room, which is a little bit more of an organic shape. So I'm going to try and repeat that now. <laughs> Might be a little too complicated. Oh well, we'll just try it anyway. I'm going to try it with some different colors. So maybe I'll make a big one. But I'm going to use this. I might have made that too complicated. That is my opinion on that. So let me simplify it by getting rid of it. I think you really want to go with something that's not so complicated. So I think I'll just do Something like that. Here we go. Again, it's almost kind of like the ovals, but they are placed in a different way. I think I'll repeat that down here. And maybe I'll make So let me make a few of these and then I'll come back and see what I'm going to do with it next. Okay, so I've put down some shapes. I'm just gonna put some matte medium over these. Some of them, most of them are with the Derwent. They're just simple shapes. I actually got a little better at making them the more I made. So they are repetitive. I'm liking the blue and the brown. The black, not as much. So my next is going to be to apply some paint over the top of those, kind of using these as just, I need to dry this first though. Okay, so I've got these repetitive patterns down here and I'm gonna paint over some of them. And I've got just a few colors here that I'm gonna play with. I'm not trying to make anything. I'm just playing with those patterns and I might put some more down as I go along. I've got the Payne's Gray. I'm 
I've got some red sienna. This is just me showing you some things that you would be able to try. Might not even be quite my thing, but I thought you might like, some of you might like to give this a try because it is something that you will see. You know, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just putting paint down and I'll try to take my scraper tool, which I tend to really like, scrape through it. You know, I like that Payne's Gray. It's a color I've never really used very much. And I just got it, and I do really like it. So I think I'll put a little bit more of that down. Kind of a lighter. It makes a really great blue. I said, you know, I always kind of think in the beginning, it's okay to not know where you're going because sometimes it doesn't kind of show up for a while. So you just kind of put things down. Well, I've repeated my, actually became kind of like these three little leaves. And I've repeated that in different places. I've started with my drawing under there. And I've used the Paints Gray, Burnt Sienna, and some white. And I just repeated that. I left some of the lines showing through. And... Then I also put in, I'll show you, um, I also took this paper and I, which is my paper I mix paint on, and I drew my leaves with this Titan Buff Matte Fluid Acrylic. And then I stamped it in these places here that you can see. One, here, here. Each time I stamped it, it got um, more faded. So then I decided I would put down a green. And so I took my color shaper, my big color shaper, and I took some really light phthalo green um, with white and I put some satin, what is it called? It is called satin glazing liquid, okay? So I made a real thin glaze and I put that down right in here with this big color shaper. So it was just kind of a fun way to play around with the repetitive pattern. Some of them you can see, some of them you can't. And uh, I encourage you to try that with some kind of a simple shape, repeat it, draw it, paint over some of your drawing, um, make some of the pattern with paint, cover things up, keep the color choices really simple. Maybe, you know, two or three colors and white and uh, have fun with it and see what you can do. So that is my repetitive pattern painting.